Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartiya and we are here at Open Source Summit in Seattle and today we have with us once again Andrew Waffa, Chair of the Yocto Project. Andrew, it's good to have you back on the show. Thanks, Vano. Well, yeah, it's good to be back. It's been a long time. It's been a while. Of course, everybody knows about the Yocto Project, but just refresh their memories. Sure. Uh, so the Yocto Project is a tool to build a custom uh, Linux operating system. Uh, it's not a distro. It's not a uh, pure build system. It is a toolbox to enable you to build a custom image for whatever hardware you may have. It could be a small embedded device. It could be a server sitting in the cloud. Um, it can do everything in between as well. And how old has been, I mean, because we have been hearing about Yocto since we were born. So yeah. how old is the project? <laughs> um, so you must be, what, 13 now or something along those lines? Yeah, we're, we're, the Yocto project is about, I want to say 12 to 13 years old. Um, Fun fact, we are the first collaborative project in the Linux Foundation after the Linux kernel. Uh, and so a lot of our operations and functions, so patches and, and communications, etc., are styled around the Linux kernel because that's what we had to use as a base model. And in these like 13 years or so, uh, and when we are today, you know, the world has changed in this. That, that's what the, I ask, you know, how old the project, because you folks have seen the project has seen, the world has seen so many changes. Talk about the significance of the project in modern world. Things have moved a heck of a lot in the last decade, a decade and a bit. And uh, from a significance perspective, um, Yocto actually handles in one shape or another uh, I want to say over half of the US network traffic um, may not be quite as much, might be a little bit more. Uh, but basically, all of Cisco's routers use Yocto. They're all based, they're all built with Yocto so that the operating system that's running on there is a Yocto built uh, OS. And so, yeah, we can claim we actually handle half of uh, the US network traffic, right? Um, we're in space. Uh, we've been on, uh, you know, in satellites, uh, Mars rover, uh, et cetera. So we are literally um, everywhere. How different is Yocto? There are a lot of other tools, you know, that can build distribution for a specific hardware. Um, so th there are a number of different uh, build systems that are Yocto-like. Um, I think none of them are as fully featured as Yocto, um, but with them having less features and, and somewhat less functionality in some respects, it does make them somewhat easier. Um, we, you know, at the Octa Project, we acknowledge one of our biggest uh, complaints and one of us, our biggest problems is that we are a pretty complex beast, and so the the learning curve is very steep. Right? Uh, some of our um, peers are simpler, easier to get up and running, um, and it's great for proof of concept, small ish devices or small yield devices when you start growing and expanding uh like in volume these other platforms won't necessarily be able to handle the complexities required whereas yocto is designed to be uh used at scale in one word we talk about cloud native kubernetes but the fact is that underneath interest it all runs on linux you know Right. Yes. So when we talk about Yocto, you know, you said you, you folks are in the space, Antarctica, under the ocean, over the ocean. Uh, talk about, you know, when we look at all the modern system where the focus is too much on what turns on top, how much work is still being done at that layer, the Linux kernel layer? Because we don't hear, because it's stable, mature technology. Right. Um, and, you know, crucially, it's boring, right? Who wants to talk about boring stuff? Me, um, because 
you know, being the foundation for everything that's being built, it needs to be rock solid, right? You need to make sure that it is as secure as possible. It is as stable as possible. Um, you know, we, we do reproducible builds to make sure that everything works. You can go back in time uh, and, and rebuild the same image that you had a year ago or whatever else, and it just works, right? Um, we track the upstream kernel very closely. We track the upstream uh, compilers very closely, both GCC and LLVM, right? Um, because we want to make sure that you have the latest, greatest, and most secure uh, components to build your platform uh, as you need. So yeah, it's 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 not shiny, it's not latest and greatest, um, but we are there. We are a build system that you can build your container images, your server OS, your server board management control uh, operating system with your uh, network router, your IoT gateway, your telco base station, your car uh, platform, both from a, an in-vehicle in entertainment perspective, as well as the digital cockpit, right? We wouldn't make it into those places if we weren't solid, if we weren't secure, and if we weren't stable. You folks, the, the project has is the recipient of the Sovereign Tech Fund STF, you know. Uh, talk a bit about that. Yeah, so um, at the Octa project, we had identified, look, we need to grow the project. We need to expand. Uh, we need to move into potentially other verticals, other segments. We need to grow our contributor base, our maintainership, and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, and so we had a five-year plan that was member-driven. Uh, this was direct input from our membership uh, as to what they felt needed to happen in the project for it to be successful and for them to be successful, right? Uh, and our chief architect within the project, Rich Purdy, put out a blog post um, basically highlighting the troubles and tribulations of a maintainer, right? Um, a single maintainer of a large code base, what the pain points are and how tiring it is, where, where the areas of, of concerns are from his perspective, how do we make sure that things are secure and, and whatnot, uh, and continue to make them secure. Uh, the Sovereign Tech Fund saw this blog post and they reached out to us and said, look, we've identified the Okta project as a critical piece of infrastructure uh, in modern day world, you know, we run Cisco routers and telco base stations, etc., and, and cars and whatnot. Uh, and the STF, one of the STF's remit is to ensure that open source is sustainable. Uh, and it, it continues to grow and, and live and, and, you know, you can rely on it for many years to come. Uh, and they reached out and said, look, we would like to provide some funding to the project. Uh, to ensure that it can meet those goals kind of thing. We're like, okay, great, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. We were hoping to do a, a bit of a recruitment drive, but this is fantastic. Um, and we did the recruitment drive anyway. We've got a load of m new members on board. Um, but the Sovereign Tech Fund uh, allowed us to invest in lowering the barrier to entry, so providing a... GUI-like interface to uh, the build system, uh, and that uh, GUI's called, uh, it's more of a web interface, that's called Toaster. Um, we've uh, done a whole heap of work on security side of things and hardening of, of everything, uh, and of ensuring that we have the right process in place, right? Um, the Octo project was the proof of concept platform for SPDX 3.0. Uh, that was announced uh, this week. Uh, and, you know, from the 
very early days, we've collaborated with SPDX to ensure that S-bombs are automatically generated now. Uh, before it was a manual operation, now it's uh, automatic. You do your build, you get your S-bomb straight away. Um, the uh, Sovereign Tech Fund's helping fund a uh, binary distro uh, built by Yocto, so uh, using RPM dev type scenario. Um, we've now got a, a Visual Studio um, plugin to enable you to seamlessly flow with Yocto and, and with your code base, etc. Um, and that VS Code extension actually works in a number of uh, you know VS Code based platforms, right? Um, and there's a whole raft. There were like nine, uh, eight, eight components that Sovereign Tech Fund uh, enabled um, from our five-year plan, uh, and that kind of shortens um, the the timeline to actually having these components out. Uh, and it's great to see a lot of our ecosystem actually coming up and responding to the RFQs, etc. For you know, to do this work, um, it helped them, you know, give back to the community. Uh, it helped them, you know, gain better exposure and experience within the project. Uh, and all around, you know, end users have benefited massively from it. Now. And earlier you were saying when I was thinking about, you know, there are other projects you are doing and you were like, yes, they are simpler. Yocto has a steep learning curve. With this fund, are you also trying to make things, you mentioned G, GUI, some of that, to make things simpler, easier, or that's not we, on the... We, we are trying to make things uh, simpler and easier. However, due to the complexities of what you can do with Yocto, there is only so much that you can simplify. You, you effectively have to remove features and functionality to, to, to make it that much simpler, right? Um, but what we are trying to do is ensure that our documentation is as clear and concise as possible. We are providing uh, free training uh, for those that, that are interested. Um, we host uh, twice a year uh, what we call uh, Yachta Project uh, Developer Days, so the YP Dev Days, uh, and we quite often have number of tracks one is aimed at beginners you know you are literally entering into the space for the first time um, you can learn from the basics uh, and get up and running uh, we also have a intermediate to advanced track so if you've been doing it for a little while and you kind of understand the basics go at that and build up your skill set so we are making efforts to lowering that barrier to entry um, but it's a balance of feature and functionality versus how steep a learning curve is it going to be, right? Um, you know, to some people, learning to drive a car is really, really difficult, right? Um, but once you do it a few times, you kind of get the hang of it and, oh, actually, it's not so bad, right? It's the same sort of thing in, in our view that it just takes that little bit of time now to, to get up and running. We're providing the... the the uh, collateral to enable you to, to do it self, you know, at your own pace, at home. Um, we have a number of members and, you know, within the ecosystem as well that provide training. Uh, so if your company is wanting to get training, uh, you can go to a number of these members. Um, and I think even the Linux Foundation provides training now for Yocto, right? So there's a lot of choices to how you can get your knowledge up and how you can kind of sh make that uh, learning curve a little bit shallower. Since you're talking to companies, can you also talk about what kind of vendor system is around your tool? Like when somebody tries to is like, you know, because not everybody want, not that they cannot, but they want to. So is there any vendor ecosystem where they're like, no, oh, you want to build something for your system using Yocto? We have a turnkey solution for you. Yeah, the, we, there's a number uh, across the globe that uh, offer uh, that f feature and functionality. You've got, you know, huge companies like Wind River, 
that provide uh, the capability to build uh, Yocto-based images, and, and they have a, a very long uh, history in doing that, uh, people like Montevista. Uh, you've got smaller companies like Savoir Faire, Bay Libre, uh, the Neutronics, um, the list goes on and on. Um, you know, but if you go to uh, yoctoproject.org, you'll be able to get a, a, a list from our, our partner database there. Now, let's talk about the code base part. Can you talk about the releases? What kind of things are in the pipe? So, um, the upcoming release should be, uh, it's called Scarf Gap. Uh, don't ask me why. Uh, that was uh, our lead architect's uh, decision, but that's uh, you know version 5.0. That's due out the end of April. Um, it's a long-term release, so that means that it's going to be supported for four years. Um, originally, uh, uh, when we started doing LTS releases, it was only a two-year support, uh, and we ended up having two uh, two-year supports, kind of back-to-back -back sort of thing. And and the members were like, two years yeah, just yeah, yeah, what, what isn't long enough, right?" Um, but obviously, people like Wind River and Monte Vista, etc., one of their USPs is being able to provide a long period of support. Some of, our, some of their customers want support for 10 years. Um, and so we were conscious about how do we provide something to the community that doesn't impact these companies' commercial you know, benefits, right? Uh, and so we kind of settled on a four-year life cycle because um, we tended to find that actually it takes companies that are using Yocto images about two years-ish to be able to get ready to migrate to the next version, right? Uh, and so with, with a four-year LTS release, it means that halfway through the LTS cycle, will people start upgrading and so by the time they're finished upgrading they're gonna have to go through that cycle again whereas they go with somebody like wind river they don't have to go straight away it's going to you know they can have a nice easy life and that is not dependent on the version of Linux that kernel that you know can be lts release or correct it, you know so the, the lts will take a um you know, whatever, whatever kernel version it, it's, you know, is current at the time. Uh, we normally try and pick an LTS kernel, but um, that whole LTS kernel side of things is changing, which makes things interesting from our perspective. Um, and so, yeah, we, it's one of those things that we're having to work with and, and work around and kind of, uh, look to our community to help us with. The project has been around for a very long time. Uh, it's mature, boring. But are there any pain point or challenges that you're like, hey, the project is still facing those? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily yoc say Yocto is boring. Um, however... Um, boring is good. Sure. Absolutely. Um, I think there are definitely pain points that are very difficult to get rid of. So one of those is, uh, you know, how do we resolve the bus factor with our lead architect, right? We have one person that is funded to work full time on Yocto project. Everyone else that contributes and, and is a maintainer or whatever else does it in true open source fashion as part of a hobby or as part of their job, but it's not the sole thing that they do for their job, right? Uh, and so how do we fund or provide additional maintainers to the project? How can we lessen the load on our lead architect, the burden that he has? How do we prevent burnout? Uh, you know, usual um, issues that people have with maintainers, right? Uh, that, so that's very much uh, a current pain point. There's also the fact of how do we grow our contributor base? Um, I think we've struggled a little bit because it's been such a steep learning curve. 
we're kind of hoping now that we've put into place a lot of this, uh, you know, better workflow process, better training material, web UI, and that sort of stuff, that we'll be able to see an increase in uh, contributors. I mean, when we look at some of these projects, I used to talk to uh, Linus, uh, Greg also, you know, that you need to have a flow of maintainers, you know, the, the new people. Do you also have any kind of succession plan or mentorship where you're not just relying on one or two key people there? So we, there are a number of people within the community that, um, can potentially step in and help out. Um, we are looking at ways of what sort of mentorship, is there a way of doing some sort of internship where we can help train people up to maintain a level uh, functionality that our members can benefit from, right? So as an example, let's say a company X has a reason, you know, mid-level engineer that kind of knows Yocto, but not brilliantly. Um, can they dedicate that person to the project for 12, 18 months? Uh, and we help train this person up to being, so just a, a, a very average Yocto engineer to being a very good Yocto engineer that is able to be a maintainer, can own a component of Yocto uh, and move forward. And after that period of time, that person goes back to their company um, with a, an expanded skill set that the company is going to benefit from, right? Uh, and this person continues to contribute either as part of their day job or as their hobby back to the project and, and we keep that thing going. So there's a lot of things that we're discussing. How can we do this better? Um, but it takes a bit of time, effort, and trying to get uh, member companies to provide dedicated headcount is very difficult. Andrew, once again, thank you so much for uh, joining me today and of course talk about the Yocto project. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely, and the pleasure is all mine. Thanks very much, Swabnall. Take care.